All right, well, if, if we're rolling now, we'll just get started off and I'll uh, introduce who's here. My name is Tim White. We're here at uh, the Houdini Magic corporate office in the conference room. We're sitting surrounded by a bunch of pictures of Harry and Bess Houdini. Uh, around the ceiling, we've got the Houdini code, which uh, was the way that Houdini was going to contact Bess and so that she would know that it was actually Houdini contacting her. So we're talking about the history of the water torture cell and Eric was very instrumental in keeping the water torture cell alive. Uh, Houdini first did the water torture cell in 1912. Uh, he referred to it as the upside down. In 1942, Sid Radner obtained the water torture cell from Houdini's brother Hardin. In 1971, Sid displayed the water torture cell at the Houdini Museum in Niagara Falls, Canada. Uh, then they decided at the museum that they wanted to restore the tank in 91. So they contacted John Gunn and Associates. And our guest today, Eric Olson, was working at uh, John Gunn and Associates at the time. And he was one of the key players in doing the restoration of the water torture cell. So we're going to pick his brain today and try and get some background on the water torture cell and get some information and history about it. Um, so you were there when the water torture cell first came in 91? I was there when it came in in 91 and uh, worked on uh, completely restoring that one, yes. Mm -hmm. was, was there much damage to it, do you recall? It wasn't burned from a fire at that time, it was just in rough shape? I remember a lot of the rubber was rotted out of it at the bottom. I remember it had a lot of water damage to it and a lot of rust and corrosion to it, mainly. Well, that would make sense in, yeah. a, in a water tank. That, you know, Houdini <laughs> used it for a long time, and they actually used it as a fish tank at the Houdini Museum in Niagara Falls as well. So then it went back to the museum in Niagara Falls, and then at that museum there was a fire in 1995, and the water torture cell was almost completely destroyed, and basically all the wood on the cell was burned. And at that time, Sid Radner, the owner of the cell, contacted John Gunn again, and in 1996, the cell was, or the remnants of the cell, were shipped to John Gunn in Los Angeles. And once again, Eric was there, and he was the one that saw the burned pieces of the cell and a bunch of melted and bent up metal parts. Melted, out of figure, heat damaged, heat, heat stressed. Uh, a lot of the wood was left, but it was all ash. It was all burnt ash. Uh, there was screws, nuts, bolts, broken pieces of glass. It looked like it was tempered glass broken. Uh, but you really would never guess in a million years it was a water tank at one time. You'd have no idea what, you know, it was Houdini's. Uh, it was just a big mess. It came in some crates that were marked, I remember, Houdini with uh, extra pieces of glass for the front glass piece. Uh, I think it said Houdini across the front, uh, but most of the, the rest of the pieces all came in cardboard boxes and wooden crates, I remember. Was it still about the size of the water torture cell, or were the pieces pretty much broken down to... Well, they, they, were, they came in a pile. Uh, we reconstructed the pieces as far as like the corners and what we knew was a front plate that held the glass, and we kind of put it back together, welded pieces of steel and put screws into places and, and somewhat reconstructed the tank to look as close to what it originally did as possible with what was left. Uh, and that's about basically all you could do with what was left with what was sent to us. So there was a long time period where it was in John's shop. Uh, basically it arrived there in 96 mm -hmm. and the restoration was completed in 2002. What was the, the long delay there? Why was it in the shop six years for the restoration? Uh, that I have no idea. I know we would work on it in between other jobs. Mainly the most of my priority at John Gons was building magic illusions. Uh, we would uh, 
get this thing out and work on it every once in a while, this thing being the water tank, uh, it would sit in this state I was telling you, screwed to a dolly, and we would do nothing to it for months at a time, and then I guess when it got slow, we would start you know, putting some time back into it. And uh, as far as the process of what really made us go out and start buying the wood and getting uh, some of the pieces reforged and re, uh, uh, reformed at the foundries, I, I don't know why it took so long. I think uh, just trying to discover what the pieces really were took a while, but I think a lot of it was just the time we had to put into it. Well, I guess because the museum had burned down, there was no urgency to get it finished, and so it became a filler project in the shop. There was exactly. It was probably a filler project, and a, uh, at that time, when I was working at John's, I did not, uh, that was not any part of my job, is to say what we worked on and what we didn't work on. Mm. But, but, yeah, it, but it, it was like an ongoing it was, process. It was an ongoing years, process, it was... and it was never a priority until maybe like the last year. Then I knew it was like a big rush to get this thing done. So do you know what the the kick was to get it finished? I have no idea. No, okay. I do not know. Because it did go, at that time when it was finished, it went to New York to uh, the American Jewish Historical Society and it was displayed there, so maybe that was... That could have been wanted it. to display it there, so we... And then also every two years they did an LA uh, Magic uh, History Conference and it might have been getting, a, getting it done for one of those again because I know it was displayed at the History Conference. Uh, at one time as well. Both both the, when it was originally restored from the water tank version where they had it as a fish tank and then when it was uh, restored again from the fire it was in the, a conference again also on display. And that so might have been a kick. The, the restoration in 91 that seemed like it was a pretty fast turnaround. You know that that basically was just repolishing, uh, repolishing, remaking a few of the mechanisms and it really wasn't that hard of an ordeal to do. It was just uh, replating and repolishing, basically, maybe making a few uh, nuts and bolts that had to be uh, replicated. Yeah, because you were just fixing up what was there rather than. Uh, yeah, it was just made, it was more of a re restoration instead of a complete construction of a new one from nothing. Mm -hmm. So, the big controversy with the water torture cell, the sort of the elephant in the room, is that there was another cell made um, that for Johnny's personal use. Um, yeah, uh, as far as what I understood that was, was a, a display item for him. It had several shelves inside. If this is it right here, it had several glass shelves and he could put his antique magic collection inside of it. And um, I remember that uh, the one that was the real restoration had, I think, 99% of the parts in it were original or, or parts of it were original. And I think maybe the one for his personal use that was a display maybe had one or two original nuts and bolts or screws in it, but none of the original parts were put back into his collection or his. Uh, so there wasn't significant parts of the of the original cell, but there was a few. There was some original parts in his, yeah, but I, I could not. If I looked at it today, I could not tell you which that was the original one. I'm, I'm guessing it might have been a handle or a corner piece of brass or something like that. Yeah. And so you think that his was a working model? or? Well, I don't think either one of them was a working model as far as holding water, but as far as a mechanism on the original one, it was a working model with the locks. Oh, really? so, so even the what's considered the authentic restoration one, it wouldn't hold water, you don't think? I think you could fill it with water, but I think it would drain out in about less than a minute. Okay. I don't think it would have held water. No. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. It might have, you know, but it was never tested. I mean, we put it back together as much as we can, but uh, the original one I remember was all coated in between the pieces of plywood with almost an orange looking rubber. And something was sealed wow. in there, and, and uh, all the burnt pieces, you can see this orange sort of film on everything. And I know we put no waterproofing in our restoration other than rubber and plastic gaskets. Okay, so it's basically just a, a visual reproduction, it's not a, an actual working... It was an actual working mechanism as far as locks, but not water holding. Not water tight. Not water tight. So you wouldn't have been able to do the, the water torch assembly? I do not think so, but then again, I don't know if the original one ever held water without leaking either. You know, I'm assuming it would leak <laughs> like a sieve, uh, just from being a wooden construction. Do you remember what parts were used? Like when the the burnt cell came back into the John shop, do you remember what parts there were? We've yes. Got, we've got a picture here of someone standing inside a shell. Mm-hmm. 
I remember restoring this part was used. We I had to heat treat that and remake it flat again. So, so it was the front. Frame so that was a front frame. Uh, I believe this this uh, frame around the top, that angular frame around the top. I believe three of these pieces of angle. These pieces of angle had nuts inside of them, and that would actually grab the wood. We used three of those pieces of angle, but one of them I could not fix. So three of them um, worked, and there was a bottom frame. I made every. Uh, piece of that bottom frame work again and put new, I think I had to re-weld the screw mechanisms that held the wood into it. So were the casters part of the restoration or the is casters it just a dolly were, that it's sitting on? The dolly is just a dolly I made, this is just a steel frame dolly I made to sit this on so we could move it around the shop. Okay. It had nothing to do with the restoration and the, there were casters that came with this and the horns were still there, they were useless and all the rubber was burnt in the in the horns and the caster part was burnt and uh, that was all ordered and brand new off the shelf uh, because we could not replicate those. Okay. And the original cell when it sat in the museum in Niagara Falls it was on a big base and so I guess that was originally to catch water that never... I've never future. saw that base all I ever saw was basically this with these pictures you're showing me I've never seen that base other than in photographs. Really? Uh -huh. okay. So then the, the plan was that the cell was a self-contained unit and that you just made a dolly for the cell to sit on? Dolly to sit on so we can move it around and work on it and get a little bit higher to work on. And what always amazed us is how short that was because you can see him standing next to it. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you envision it being this huge box and that's really a small... Yeah, box. you envision it from the Tony Curtis movie, you know, where he's you know lost inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so the... The other rumor, I guess, is that Johnny sold some of the props or had them framed or gave them away some of the parts of the original cell, some of the burnt pieces. or Yeah, this is a touchy subject, but what I remember is uh, pieces of wood, like similar to this right here, mm -hmm. um, small pieces of wood, uh, nuts, screws, bolts, uh, one or the other, put in a picture frame, and I think he gave it to one of his friends. Mm -hmm. I don't know who it was. I just, I just remember that happening at one time. Mm -hmm. So... I just wanted to show you the, the original pencil sketch of the water torture cell. So I guess the concept of the water torture cell originally, Houdini was doing the milk can, mm -hmm. and so he was already doing an underwater escape, but wanted to do something more dangerous, and he wanted the audience to be able to see him. And so that's when he came up with the idea of using a, he thought of a, like a clear milk can at first. So then he was doing also doing the upside down straight jacket escape, and so he wanted to combine the straight jacket and a water escape where people could see him. And he was also doing the jail cell escapes. Mm -hmm. So this original concept is a jail cell built around a water tank hanging upside down like the position he was in for the straight jacket. So basically he tried to make a best of. Take all of his best tricks and combine them into, <coughs> into one because he felt that the audience you know, was sort of uh, taking the milk can for granted and wanted to show more danger and drama in, in his show. And it really worked for him. And it seems like over time he took away more of the bars there were some straps in some of the earlier versions and I was wondering if on this cell you saw any evidence that there used to be straps on it or... No, I didn't see any evidence of that other than at one time we were um, investigating other photos we could find and I do remember uh, seeing a, a photograph of maybe like three or four bars going down in front of the glass and that's all I can ever remember seeing. Mm -hmm. You can see in this picture that there are some Looks like yeah, something like that, but I also saw glass. some running up and down, four or five mm -hmm. round ones like that in a photograph. And it, I, uh, I don't think it was a drawing, I think it was an actual photograph. So then you would assume that that was a different cell than the one that you worked on? Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, I don't ever remember seeing anything on this that would ever hint that there were straps running up and down or left to right on it. All right. And then during the time that the, the shop you were in the shop and the uh, water torture cell was getting restored. There was a lot of people that saw it and it was sort of a, a, a subject of interest in the shop to different magicians and people that came in. Yeah, I think everybody that came into the shop, we showed it to them and we kind of took pride in it, I think. You know, it was kind of like, look at this, this is Houdini's original it's tank. It's like a trophy, yeah. Yeah, it was. It really was. Uh, as far as who saw it first, I have no idea, but, you know, uh, we would have hundreds of people come in there, you know, throughout the year, and I would say everybody looked at it, and you know, we told them the story about it. Mm -hmm. um, so then uh, the time came to 
send the parts back to uh, or to Gina Minari here at uh, Houdini's. And what was that process? Johnny just came in one day and said, "Pack up all the parts well, of the water torture cell." What I remember, I remember hearing some rumblings about a lawsuit. I have no idea other than I heard rumblings of a lawsuit. John said we got to get all this stuff back to. Uh, to whoever the owner was at the time. I always thought it was Sid Radner who we were sending everything back. And what we had was a, a closet there that had like two different padlocks. We kept everything in there in cardboard boxes. And the cardboard boxes, I remember, it just looked like ashes and grits and you know, pieces of paper and uh, burned up uh, screws and wood. And uh, that was everything from this project. And there's probably three or four boxes in there. And then there was another one full of broken glass. Uh, as far as stuff being all scattered on the floor, I don't remember that other maybe than there was cardboard boxes on the floor because we did try to reconstruct as much of uh, the wooden burnt pieces as possible to see how it actually went back together. Uh, there's probably stuff laying on the floor, you know, time to time, but I think we tried our best to save every little bit of it. And so the pieces that did get shipped back, what would you assume that they would be? the? I mean, there's some metal parts. Do you uh, think that would be around the lid, or I think there was some metal parts that were so heat damaged, they were so uh, twisted and, and warped out of shape that that went back. I am assuming there was a lot of these nuts and bolts that were on the front. I think they were just uh, bolts. Uh, there's probably a bunch of screws that didn't make it back into the original uh, or the the reproduction. And then these pieces of wood here. There was like the entire bottom. I remember it might have been a bottom or a piece of a back. That still existed, but it was so burnt you couldn't do any restoration with it. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the construction of the wood was almost like slats or tongue and grooves where you could pull it apart. It was made to come apart, and so it would fall apart really easy, but you could kind of put it back together like a puzzle. Okay, well, I think that uh, we've covered. Do you have anything else that? Any other stories about it or anything else? Uh, my favorite story about it is once we got it fully restored without the front in it, I put, I put my four or five year old son inside of it and he stood in front of it and got his picture <laughs> taken. And I, I think that's my favorite memory of the whole thing is seeing my son standing inside of Houdini's uh, water torture cell. But it didn't mean anything to him, he didn't know what it was. No, he, yeah, he could care less, right? Yeah. Well, he might one day. Yeah, one day that might mean something to him. All right, well, we would like to. Uh, Take you in the warehouse now, mm -hmm. and we've got all the boxes that uh, I guess it was you that packed them up, maybe yeah. with some other people, and we'd like to open them for the first time and see what's inside. Yeah, it was either me or my business partner packed them up, and uh, let's go look at them.